Well, if you're about to change out your paddle wheel speed sensor or depth meter, then this video is for you. Of course, the best way to do this is with the boat up on blocks, the way I have it now, out of the water. You may have to try and clear the paddle wheel uh, with the boat in the water, in which case it's a much more anxiety-provoking situation. If um, this little uh, moving part here is jammed up, of course, um, you could clear that with uh, a brush or maybe throwing the boat into reverse or um, maybe diving to the water and cleaning it underneath. But inevitably, eventually these things fail and they need to come out. Of course, once the boat is out of the water, the first instinct is to aim the pressure washer at this device to clear it. And you can do that, but I'd be careful if I were you because there are little magnets in these little paddle wheels and they can get knocked off with the pressure washer. Well, here we are in the forward cabin. And I'll show you those two meters. There's the depth transducer right there with a plug. And then there's my uh, paddle wheel spencer with a second smaller plug. Uh, let's uh, deal with this depth transducer first. Um, what you do first is there's a stainless steel wire. I've taken it off already, but it connects the threaded end to the housing so it can't be accidentally dislodged. The first thing you do is you uh, remove this um, from its attachment point so it's uh, um, freely mobile and you clean it off really carefully because you don't want to get any dirt into the connection that might uh, create a, a leak later. Let's do that now. Before we get started, let's have a look at this blanking plug. This is it here. This goes in the hole once we remove the sensor, and it's specifically designed for that particular sensor, so I know it's going to fit. I've used it before. Now, when you um, look at these, be really careful of the O-rings. Clean it all off and make sure the O-ring is not cracking or splitting. There are actually two O-rings in this device. The second one is right here, and you need to make sure both are clean and free of debris. Uh, the whole thing uh, looks to be pretty good. Now, once you've got it clean and free of debris, then you can very carefully use some sort of silicone to try and keep this um, clear and prevent micro leaks. Now, if there's any issue with the O-rings, particularly splitting or cracking, then don't hesitate to replace them. These are cheap and easy to replace, and it's a much uh, safer alternative to do it now with the boat up out of the water. Now you can imagine the gush of water you're going to have when this comes out, and so bear in mind which direction it's pointed, some of them um, that matters, and have your plug handy and ready and cleaned off with uh, good O-rings. You've undone the stainless steel uh, connecting wire, and then you just uh, spin this off counterclockwise, and then once it's loosed, give it a little shake and pull. And there we have it. And of course, um, if you're in the water, you want to quickly replace the, the O-ring and you're away to go. Now the paddle wheel is a bit more complicated. You could take it off the same way you did with the sensor by undoing the uh, stainless steel wire as I've done and undoing this, and the whole thing will lift out. If you do that, you make sure you have a big plug to go in the hole because the big plug is larger than the smaller one. Um, the second option with the paddle wheel is to um, use this pin. This pin is a locking pin. You notice there are three split, split rings there. And that locking pin comes out. And when the pin comes out, then the paddle wheel sensor can be just pulled out with this ring. The other thing uh, that's important to notice with the paddle wheel is that it uh, has to um, be pointed in that direction with the wire going to the front. And it's very important to do it that way because it's, it affects the calibration of your paddle wheel. You want the paddle wheel to be uh, directing water forward, not backwards or to the side. And so um, it's really important to notice the configuration that you have with your device before you start monkeying around with it. Right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo one of these split rings and I'm going to pull out this pin in anticipation of lifting the paddle wheel out. Okay, I'm going to remove the safety pin. Now, if you're in the water, you want to hold it down in case the water doesn't push it up. But uh, most likely it'll be stuck in there regardless. So you got it in place, you got your plug handy, and then just pull. And you notice the teeth that that jives into. See the teeth in the front? You want those to be meshed nicely. Pull it out and put your uh, plug in, and then replace the safety pin, and you're done. Let me show you the flap. It's right in there, that little black thing. And you push down on it, it uh, pushes aside. Now you can imagine water gushing in, forcing that flap shut and reducing the amount of water that ends up in your cabin. Well, that's all there is to it. As you can see, it's pretty simple. Hopefully the first time you do it, it'll be on dry dock, and so you have a chance to look at it with a little more time. Say, uh, if you own a diesel engine, then consider staying tuned. I've always been intrigued by that diesel design, and I hope to do some future videos on diesel engine maintenance or repair. Thanks for watching.